let's have a look at what happens when you have a political party that only believes in fantasy, can only exist in a fantasy realm. Well, you get legislation to prevent non-existent things from happening. Here is that very thing. Anti-abortion measures are so unpopular, Republicans in the House actually invented something popular sounding that they could vote on. They created a bill to outlaw something totally made up. It is called the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. It makes it a crime for doctors to murder babies that are born alive during an abortion, which, Again, does not happen. if it were something that happened, would be very much already covered under existing laws against, you know, murder. But it's a moot point because only in the dark imaginations of Republicans is this something that abortion providers would ever actually do. Do not take it from me. Take it from a doctor, Alice Mann, a Democratic state senator in Minnesota where state Republicans are pushing born alive legislation. This is a perfect example of why politicians should not be making medical decisions, is because we are literally making stuff up. And writing laws about it at this exact moment. Um, a child does not come out part way alive and then doctors kill it. That's not a thing. That's not a thing today. It's not a thing tomorrow. It's not a thing 10 years ago. It's not a thing. So for us to legislate things that don't exist in real life, again, perfect example of why politicians should not practice health care. Of course, this is just the latest in Republicans' decades-long war on what are generally called late abortions, but which Republicans like to call partial birth abortions, another completely made-up thing. So let's use a little of what we've learned. That is misinformation as well as disinformation. They take a real thing, abortions, and use numbers associated with it out of context in order to, excuse me, that's uh, disinformation and malinformation, uh, in order to um, achieve their own political ends, which end up hurting Americans. It's also disinformation. This is Republicans using straight-up fantasy, a made-up thing, Right there in the, right there in the quote. Not a thing. Let's let uh, Alex Wagner finish. By the way, rising star in my uh, in my estimate. Abortions that take place after 20 weeks of gestation make up just one percent of abortions performed in the United States of America, and they are generally performed because of severe fetal abnormalities, or in some yeah. cases because a woman okay. has been unable to obtain an abortion because of the very restrictions Republicans have put in place. Just to clarify, that's like when a doctor tells you, listen, this baby, if, we care, if you carry this baby all the way to uh, birth and you have it, it's going to live for about 30 seconds outside of the womb, and that will be 30 seconds of pure agony. Hurts to hear. Like We don't like talking about this stuff. I wish we didn't have to. I wish that sadness could be contained to only the moment that it was absolutely necessary. And even then, I wish we had an educated populace working hard to make sure those kinds of birth defects uh, that, that shatter families didn't happen. But Republicans, monsters that they are, use that to play political games to rile up their base with disinformation and malinformation. And they cause more heartache, more heartache, for the families going through something like that. It's insane. In state after state. Late abortions are difficult and they are costly and they are definitely not chosen on a whim. The other measure Republicans uh, in the House approved today condemns violence over the issue of abortion, but not violence against abortion providers, which has spiked in recent years. Oh, God. No, this condemns attacks on anti-abortion facilities, including crisis pregnancy centers. 
Republicans love to promote crisis pregnancy centers as places that take care of pregnant women. But in fact, crisis pregnancy centers are infamous for falsely advertising themselves as abortion providers and then feeding false anti-abortion information to the pregnant women who come to them in order to stop them from having the abortions they may be seeking. So let's use what we've learned. Is that misinformation, disinformation, or male information? That is... Uh, a whole lot, actually. They use um, disinformation, certainly. Uh, they will take real statistics and uh, put them out of context to uh, mislead people that, that come there. But when people, in, a, in their... in some of the saddest moments of their lives and some of their most vulnerable moments go to one of these places which are designed to look like abortion clinics. They have wording designed to draw women in. Excuse me, draw people who can get pregnant in. Uh, they, they intentionally uh, mislead people uh, into going there, and then they spread malinformation. Then they lie to them. They tell them things that are not true. This, this is what Republicans want to spend their time defending, is this nonsense. Last year, when NBC News producers visited two crisis pregnancy centers in Texas to ask for counseling, they were oh. told that abortions cause mental illness, cancer, and infertility. Male Instead of medical advice, a counselor sent away one of the producers away with a pair of knit baby booties oh, telling her she would you. pray for her. That's a crisis pregnancy center. This is week one of your new House of Representatives. No to scary sounding abortion procedures that don't actually exist. Yes, for crisis pregnancy centers that lie to women. They have really got their finger on the pulse of the American voter. Yeah. Um, despicable. Just utterly despicable. So, what we can do about this was covered in the first segment. Let's go over it again. Your GOP voting members of your community, when they bring these topics up, be prepared to explain to them uh what a misinformation campaign is. Be prepared to explain to them why they're being lied to. It's unfair. It's unfair that that decent people have to do more work to to educate uh, people who fall for Republican nonsense. But it doesn't change the fact that that work needs to get done. You can arm yourself rather than with memorizing every single insane Republican talking point. Simply memorize how to spot a lie. If it sounds insane, it usually is. And all you have to do is follow the trail until it goes cold. And if it's a lie, it's going to go cold pretty darn quickly. Get used to doing that, and it will be easier for you to convert uh, you, your, the people in your community who are caught up in this nonsense. People, and it just relies on human nature. People don't like being embarrassed. And if every time, if every time uh, your Republican colleague or whatever tells you, well, I'm, I, you know, I'm all for price, uh, crisis pregnancy centers. I just I want to get rid of all the abortion clinics. Just follow the trail. What's good about them? Where did you hear that? Let's look at this, this, this uh, pregnancy crisis center. 
Who runs it? Who pays for it? If they get a Facebook post telling them some insane thing, and then they try to share that with you, just do the extra work of looking into it. You will find where it is awry, where it has gone off. And you will be able to report back to that person. It might not yank them out all at once, but it will be difficult, extremely difficult, for them to keep bringing back uh, insane theories or to, to get caught up in these insane theories because they will feel the embarrassment of the last time they tried one of these things. They tried to talk about one of these things and were immediately <laughs> shot down by their relative or colleague or whatever that uh, knew better than to fall for it. Our lack of jumping on people with wrong opinions has resulted in growing hate groups around the country. Matter of fact, we're surrounded. The Southern Poverty Law Center tracks hate groups. Here they are in America. Ashamed to say, my, uh, my own state, Michigan, is a cluster. Even in Ann Arbor, a town that is around here known to be very liberal, there's the Thomas More Law Center. Sounds very official. It's just a hate group. It's, it's a, to my understanding, a Christian nationalist group. Doing its best to get rid of everybody else. There are Nazi groups. There are uh, what, what are known as militias around here that incidentally don't care for people who aren't white. Links in the description. You can look at this map as well. Look for your state. If I'm not mistaken, every state, even Hawaii has one. The only one doesn't is Alaska. God bless them. <laughs> uh, but yes, we have a serious problem with hate groups in this country. As a matter of fact, the FBI agrees. Um, this is a report, from uh, the, the annual report from the FBI and uh, Department of Homeland Security. This was done in 2021, uh, and it usually deals with the year before, and when we have it available, it's the next year. So, the end of 2022, this, this became available to us all. But they say, in 2020... Some domestic violent extremists exploited lawful gatherings after law enforcement involved deaths of unarmed African Americans. That means police shot unarmed black men. That's, that's the uh, washed way they have of saying that, but okay. Uh, they used lawful gatherings, so peaceful pro protests, uh, after blah, 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 police shot a black guy who wasn't armed to engage in violence against ideological opponents and other targets. In other words, in 2020, domestic violent extremists, a.k.a. domestic terrorists, uh, attacked people on the left, or at least people supporting left-wing ideas like Black people should be able to be just as safe walking down the street as anybody else. That is what they do. That is what uh, domestic terrorism frequently looks like in the U.S. It also looks like power stations being vandalized and shot up. Uh, another brand of right-wing extremism is this. Uh... Uh, attacking power stations, and in fact, let's look at their predictions, because they were quite correct. Uh, the FBI and Department of Homeland Security report says, we assess that uh, 
Anti-government violent extremists will continue to plot and potentially conduct sporadic attacks on critical infrastructure and in federal, state, and local facilities. Get get ready for uh, the the thing we are all expecting, as well as violent physical assaults against their perceived ideological opponents. These are the people we have been trying so hard to get law enforcement to take seriously. They keep writing reports like this. And then treating right-wing extremists with kid gloves. The way they try to arrest a right-winger versus some black guy in his car minding his business is insane. In fact, we did. That was quite correct. We did have a rise in attacks on critical infrastructure. In fact, it rose by, I believe, 70% in 2022. This is... This is the path we will continue to go down until the Justice Department treats right-wingers seriously. Until being a right-winger stops being a uh, free pass on getting away with crime. Best way we can do that is make sure there's less right-wingers. Remember these definitions. I've shared the link in the description. Misinformation is false, but not creators shared with the intention of causing harm. That's usually content creators who have fallen for something, uh, not people who are paid to create content generally, but just fans of the content who haven't looked closely enough. Male information based on fact, but used out of context to mislead, harm, or manipulate. Those are YouTubers with a big following that are intentionally uh, uh, twisting things. It's also your common run-of-the-mill politicians. And then there is disinformation, deliberately created to mislead, uh, mislead, harm, or manipulate a person, social group, or organization, or a country. More and more we're coming across that as uh, the other side gets bolder and bolder. Uh, I don't think that it's too terribly hard to identify, or at least to know when you're hearing misinformation. If, it, if it's something that seems like a Republican's wet dream, it's probably not real. Not to say that it never is ever. For example, Biden really did find, or Biden's team really did find classified documents in one of his offices. Sure. But get ready for hearing the, uh, the disinformation on that. Um, and the misinformation, and maybe, what the heck, even the malinformation. <laughs> um, it's a long annoying journey ahead of us to pull these people out of the cult. But we have to. Otherwise, that map is just going to keep filling up. And we will live in a worse and worse country. 